What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Cigars and Everything Else podcast. We are in episode, hurry up, ticker, 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 ticker. I wasn't paying attention. Episode 78. <laughs> hey, what's going ticker, on, man? man? We got some tickers now, man. It's 24, man. 2024, we got tickers, man. We upgrading the show. We up, anyway, we up. My name's Jared. My guy, Denzel's hosting the show with me. Hey, yeah. man. Let's get into some cigar talk, man, and a little bit of everything else. Yeah, we, so you ready for it? So you ready for it? I'm ready. I'm ready. What are we think smoking? I'm ready. Let's, 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 let's go straight into it. What are we smoking today? Well, for me, that scoundrel Rocky Patel got me, man. And I, I'm sorry, Rocky. You're not a scoundrel, man. I, I love Rocky. But Rocky got me, man. I went to the stop, I went to the shop looking for cigars, and I didn't know what I was looking for. But I came out with two Rocky, and that's all I got. So I'm definitely smoking Rocky Patel this week. Okay. And I believe specifically I'm going to be smoking The Dark Star by Rocky mm, Patel. I was hoping you was going with that one. Nah, we ain't gonna get it. Yeah. Still in the cellophane. Cause you, but cause you showed me, yeah. you showed me, you text me the picture of the other ones you, you were gonna smoke. You said Rocky. I'm like, which one is he gonna go with? So you got that vintage, but then you had yeah, that the dark vintage star. 92. I saw you had that dark star. I'm like, ooh, he found that dark star. I haven't been able to find it yet. So I'm glad you were able yeah. to do it. And we're gonna rock with this one. I told you, depending on where you go, it's what I'm gonna do. So okay. Okay. I don't know if well, you had a rocky episode. Can, let, me, let, me get, let me get some specs before you jump into that. Okay, no, go, yeah. ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. For the most I'll... part, this right here is going to be through and through Honduran, but it does have some uh, Paraguay fillers within it. So it's Honduran and Paraguay fillers. I ain't never had Paraguay on a stick before. Oh, so say, yeah, I haven't heard that one before. That's a new one. Rocky fancy. I'm about to go fancy. <laughs> I smoke my pinky up when I smoke this cigar. You know what I mean? But anyway, what you got this week? Hold on, before you go there, I'm curious. What was the price point on that Dark Star? Oh, it was uh like fourteen, fifty, fifteen dollars, somewhere around there. I I, okay. I I don't know. They were both in the same range, but I know it was between fourteen and fifteen for both of uh, between each other. Okay, so, okay. Because I, I mean, we had we had we had that talk about you know um, upper class Rocky, you know, premium premium Rocky. Yeah, and we had yeah. the base about whether they have. Whether Rocky is in that class, that Cohiba class, I mean the name, the name is in that Cohiba class, but right. as far as the, st- the, the the actual sticks that he has, does he have enough that's in that Cohiba class, or does he have that enough that's in that Placencia class? You know that exactly. top tier Davidoff. You know your name rings bells alongside of those names, but do you have the sticks that can set aside those other sticks? Your name, your name is on par, but do you have sticks on par? Well, from what I've heard, he uh, he does have a hundred dollar cigar out there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Really? Rocky, really? Yeah. Now um, I, I forget the name of it, and I probably can look that up while you getting your information. But yeah, Rocky's okay. supposed to have a hundred dollar stick allegedly. I don't know, allegedly. you know. But let me make sure I don't have my information wrong, man. You go ahead, and I'll let you know what I come up with. Okay, okay. I mean, if he does, I'm looking for. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, ah, the conviction. The conviction. Okay, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen that advertised. So it's, it's a pretty yes. new, uh, pretty new stick. So he, I think he heard us. I think yeah, he heard us. yeah, 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 yeah. Price tag, price tag, a hundred dollars. So, uh, okay. yeah, Rocky's like, hey man, y'all gonna stop trying to talk mess? Like I don't get down that way too. If y'all want to pay more, I charge more. You know what I mean? It's simple as <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. So he's like, look, I, I, I can go there too. And I've seen the advertisement on that. It, it, it comes <clears> in that gold. It looks like a gold bar. Yeah, that's yeah, the that's one, the right? one. Extra goldy. Yeah, yeah. You're paying for the gold, <laughs> man. Where it is, it's, it's, gold. it's uh, 10 carat like wrapper gold. is what it is. <laughs> it better smoke like gold. Yeah, for real. All right, man. So since you went Rocky, and I don't know if you've ever done a Rocky episode, but today's going to be a Rocky episode of sorts. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I went out and got um, a bunch of the top 10 that I, can, that I could find. And of course, I ran into that Rocky Patel limited age rare. And I got it right here in front of me. So since you're going with the Dark Star, I'm going to go with the Limited Age Rare, man. Okay. I'm going there. I'm going there. I'm going there today. So I like it. I like it. On this one, Uh, this rapper is San Andreas, Origins, Nicaraguan, Binder, Honduran, Filler, Honduran, and Nicaraguan. So I like it. That San Andreas kind of... um, what is it? It's around 17 bucks. Oh, 17 on the price point. Okay. Okay. 
you know, not, not nothing, nothing too, nothing cheap, but nothing too like too outrageous. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice little safe, safe zone. Yeah, make you feel so, like you, you know, bought something nice, but you ain't go crazy. Exactly, exactly. E class. <laughs> e class. Yeah. E class. So I went, I went with a straight cut. Unfortunately, I like I said, um, I've been missing all the cuts, man. My my, my punches, my V cuts. Mm-hmm. I have them. I just you know they, they they're not. I don't, I don't keep them handy, and I got to make sure whenever I'm in my space that I have every tool that whichever way I decide to go on a smoke, whatever I, whatever I'm feeling. Like I I, I gotta get I gotta get cigar bougie, man. That's gotcha, my problem. Brother. Yeah. A lot of times I'm cigar rogue, I'm, I'm cigar whatever, just grab a cigar, <clears> go <throat> for it, Neanderthal, bite this. No, and I don't bite it. But um, yeah, <laughs> I have had to do that at one point. But I need to have all my tools to my, my, my disposal whenever I'm ready to go. I need to have my punch handy. I need to have my, my, my V-cut handy and my straight. Are you going with the punch? I'm jealous. I'm jealous. That y'all going to be nice. So Yes, sir. You know, I got I got, I got to start coming ready. Sort of, sort of approaching this cigar thing like I know what I'm doing out here, you know. And yeah, man. You comfortable now, man. You've been doing it so long. You comfy now. I'm, I'm, I'm too comfortable. I'm too comfortable. I'm, I'm, I'm getting relaxed. But it's cool. It's cool. We're gonna get right. It's mama year, man. Mama year, 2024. All right, so I'm going matches and cedar. Cedar and matches. And I will tell you this, man. As soon as I pull this stick out of the um, out of the plastic, mm-hmm. nice aroma, nice aroma. As soon as it came out the plastic, man. So I'm expecting big things. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. You know, cedar puts off such a nice smell just burning cedar. I ought to start just, people burn candles. I ought to just burn cedar sticks around the house for no reason, man. That is nice. You know what? That's, not, that's, not, that's, not, that's not a bad idea. That is not a bad idea. You might be onto something with that. Yeah, man, people be burning incense and stuff, man. Why? They give yeah, away free cedar cedar. sticks at the cigar <laughs> shop, man. Just snatch one out <laughs> on the way out the cedar. door. Okay. I thought I was gonna be able to get the done with one with one um one match. And cedar, I'm going with two matches. Y'all can't be you, had the, you didn't double match? I didn't. I should have. I should have went I went I should have went straight there. You've I'm been done. good by now. All right, man. So any um any thoughts off the of first light? I, I am curious. I am curious. Uh, Very interested in that dark star, man. Oh, oh, first light, you know, uh, nothing, nothing immediate, you know. There's something that, that might be like a little bit of a fruitiness, which is interesting, you know, but it's still premature. It's still premature. So we'll see. I'm getting like some um some cocoa and some spice off the top of this one. Hmm. All right, okay, okay. A little pepper, pe- a pepper in Rocky style, of course. Yeah, and like a little a, l- a little cocoa on the back end so far off off the of first light, and aroma is nice. Aroma is nice. Spice is nice, aroma is nice. I'm with it. Yeah. All right, Rocky, let's roll. Let's 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 let's. I'm on, I'm on a journey for this top ten stick of uh 2023. So don't let me down. So man, I'm gonna jump right into this um to this everything else. So coming off the heels of our previous episode. We talked about Cat Williams, and I hate to double double down on Cat Williams talking all that stuff. It's been a lot of Cat, Cat Williams talk, and a lot of people jumping on the bandwagon. Not saying we did. We like to discuss the um what's what's going on. It was just a topic of what's going on. We had to discuss. We had to address it. So I don't like to, I don't like to, I don't like to think that we jumped on the bandwagon, but in sorts, you could say we kind of did, right? 
which is okay, which is okay, as long as it's done in the right fashion. But there was another interview that was released after Cat Williams with uh, Club Shay Shay, and this one didn't go off, not in the same fashion. It kind of fell flat in, in a sense. I mean, still did great numbers because they had that Cat Williams tag. Still did did great numbers. Probably one yeah. of the highest rated views of this individual uh, interviewer's um, uh, portfolio, if you if, if you will. But a lot of people's opinions it fell flat. And um, Willie D, man, Willie D, kind of feel like he jumped on the bandwagon in an ill sense. Yeah, I mean, you heard about this, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar with it. <laughs> so. The issue is not necessarily that he did the podcast or did an interview uh, with Cat Williams, but if you look, look, listen to the podcast and some things don't kind of add up in the title of the podcast versus how the podcast was, how the interview was. Mm-hmm. The, the, the caption reads, Cat Williams at it again after he goes in and, and explains after he broke the internet. Yeah. But if you look at the interview, you can clearly tell that this interview was probably recorded before Club Shake Shack. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not Cat Williams yeah. at it again. Yeah. Is you had an interview with Cat Williams. In the stash. Sat on it. It's like, ah, I don't know if I want to release it. It might not be all that great. People ain't really checking for Cat right now. Yeah. So I'm going to just leave it in the tub. Club <laughs> Shake Shack interview comes out. Power Soft goes big. Willie D sits back and says, in my opinion, allegedly, Yo, yeah. I got this interview with Cat Williams. I need to release mine, too. But Cat Williams goes at it again after breaking the internet. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> was what? He, he, uh, I, I, it, I looked at the video from Willie responding to everybody's response to his video with Cat Williams. Mm-hmm. And he pretty much acknowledges what you guessed. Yeah, okay. I had this in okay. the tuck for months. I didn't release it. I was, he said, I'm working on something new. And I had a, a lineup of things I was going to release to promote my new venture at the top of the year. He said, so he said, Shannon dropped his video. And he said, Kat reached out to him afterwards and said, I should have warned you this was coming so you could have did something with yours. Willie was like, he probably didn't warn, didn't think to warn me because he knew I'd been sitting on it for months and hadn't released it yet. So he was like, I don't know what this dude doing. So he probably, uh, he probably wasn't on my mind. I probably wasn't on his mind. But he said, Kat reached out after, you know, Willie dropped his and all that, you know, chaos commenced. So basically, Willie said, even after Shannon dropped his video, he thought to himself, I'm going to just hold mine. But he said, what I did was I messed, I realized I messed up once and let Shannon drop his first. Why would I mess up again and let somebody else come after Shannon and ride the wave? If I might as well ride this wave now and get the most out of the video. Because he said he didn't think that his video pretty much was going to ever reach the level of what Shannon did. He said with them two, it was a perfect storm. And he understood that. He was like, so mine was never going to do that good anyway. So in order to get the most out of the video, at least drop it at while the wave is here versus holding yeah. it and then not getting the most out of it, trying to just be separate from the wave, which yeah. business-wise makes sense. Makes sense, and yeah. He uh with the with the title he he what is the what's the term people say when you you give a fake title to get um, to get views clickbait he clickbaited yeah, clickbait yeah there we go I'm thinking clickbaited <laughs> yeah 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 that's what you used to he clickbaited man you know what I'm saying <laughs> he clickbaited and that's that's what happened man so yeah and I think that might know, be it, might, that might have been it, what most people is. probably were mad about like after the um the backlash came back at him was mainly. The caption, the clickbait, because when I went to check it out, you know, I, I did watch it for a few minutes in the, in the beginning and the interview just wasn't hidden. Like it just wasn't, it, it, it didn't, it didn't give me that umph. So I, I didn't watch it all the way through like we did with the, uh, with the Shay Shay Club, Shay Shay joint, two hours and 45 minutes. I watched the whole thing. Yeah. But I think that's where people like, um, where it rubbed people the wrong way and the criticism that he had to take, you had to sit with that criticism. Because a lot of people are expecting a certain piece of content to come. Round out. two, like, they thought round yeah, two round was coming. Two, uh, 
like gonna and go this back is the prequel. And, and, <laughs> yeah, doubling down on on what he said before, or explaining more in more depth what he was saying about some individuals. You know, just clarifying some things, clearing the air, putting or or, or doubling down, going back at it again in the same fashion that he that that he did with the uh, with, with the club Shay Shay interview. And I I think what happened was a lot of people were looking at that interview, thinking that okay, this is gonna be round two. Here we go. Yeah. And it just wasn't that. So you got to yeah. sit with that criticism because of the clickbait. If he didn't clickbait it, if he didn't clickbait it, I don't think the criticism would have been to the same height. No, it wouldn't have been. Um, and even if he was going to do the clickbait title, he could have put something in the description saying, you know, this was an unreleased interview from Cat Williams from months before. And... You know, people weren't going to read the description no way, but at least he could blame it on people's <laughs> own, you know, yeah, oh, lack oh, of I due diligence that. versus yeah, himself. You know what I'm saying? Look, you know, like every time now, like you said, due diligence, remind me, like every time like those interviews or not interviews, but people come on YouTube and they talk about a certain thing, they always throw in a little disclaimer. You heard it, you heard mm-hmm. it, you did, you didn't. I put the disclaimer out there. So now yeah. I got to leave it up to you to, if, if, if you feel some kind of way, hey, hey, dummy. I put it right there in front of you. You didn't want to look at it. Yeah. Don't blame me. You always got that 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 uh ability to throw that little trump card or cop out card, but he didn't have that. So Yeah. I think I think that's the only place he went wrong at. You know what I mean? Like everybody, everybody's clickbaiting. It's it's a competitive world and um mm-hmm. uh, as far as online and just putting out content in general. So yeah, he, he clickbaited. I get it. He ain't the first. He ain't the last. He ain't gonna be the last. A lot of people clickbait. I'm I'm beyond the clickbait titles now. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? Like I just yeah. assume you're clickbaiting me if it's too salacious. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> so, <laughs> I go in with the I'm, assumption I'm, I'm it's clickbait. Being clickbaited. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you know, I'm not mad at that. I think it was good business the timing that he dropped the video. That was good business. You supposed to drop it and ride the wave. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people call that clout chasing. Um, clout chasing is an interesting subject because it's got a negative connotation, but it's not always always done negatively. It doesn't always have to be negative. Like what, what happens is clout chasing, typically the negative connotation that you tend to think of in general is when somebody is, you know, talking negative, speaking negative, putting out negative content, um, based on a person with the intention of building their name up off of that person's Mm -hmm. brand name or whatever the case may be. Versus if we just, if you release something and it's hot, if you, you, and and I'm sorry to say this, I probably should have said this for the end, but I'm going to say it now. If you have a song with the new hot producer, right? And then that producer, but okay, if I got a song and I drop a song with, the Neptunes before the Neptunes is who they are today. It's a hit. And now Mm -hmm. Denzel got a song in the stash with the Neptunes because he worked with them six months ago, but he thought their music was weird, so he didn't release it. (laughs) And now the (laughs) Neptunes song is the biggest thing on the radio. Denzel's supposed to drop that song. I got something something to sound like that in the tuck. I didn't like it. I thought it was good, honestly. But I got to drop it. I got to drop it. That's not clout chasing at that point. That Mm -hmm. is smart business and yeah, well-timed business. And that's clout chasing, I guess you could say, but it's not technically clout so chasing. Really, you would say, like, okay, different. so clout chasing, clout chasing would have been, say, Cat reached out to Willie D for an interview. Willie D declines. Right? Or, mm-hmm. you know, say, yeah, I, 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 I'll get to you at some point. I'll get to you at some point. Cat goes back and says, hey, man, I want to do an interview with you. Blows them off again, blows the club, goes the club, Shay Shay, blows up, goes bananas. And then, yo, Kat, um, remember the interview you said you wanted to do? Yeah. Um, when, 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 when are you ready to set it up? Cloud chasing. <laughs> Cloud chasing. <laughs> so, Cloud chasing. I, I guess we, I guess what, you know what? That makes a good point because I would give them credit for even having a Cat Williams interview in the stash, right? Especially at a time where, People weren't really interviewing him mm-hmm. in that moment or in that space. Just like if I was an artist um, and I'm working with the Neptunes and I gave the Neptunes op- an opportunity to work with me, especially me being yeah. a, um, an artist already. 
like, all right, I'm going to give these young producers a, a, a shot. You know, I gave them a shot. Not that I blew them off. Hey, hey, as a Neptune's as, a, as producers, hey, we, we want to work with you. Nah, whatever, whatever. Then they finally blow up, and then I'm trying to make that call. Hey, yeah. hey, for real, Chad. Y'all want to do it? <laughs> Y'all want to do it? That's I want to still do that song <laughs> we talked about? <laughs> yeah. Cloud Chase. So, yeah. So, 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 I, so I, Willie I, I, did I, I, the interview when it wasn't hot to do the interview. He knew the interview was eh, and didn't put it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it, okay, yeah. and, and that's me putting something on it because Willie said he was saving it for a, a later venture. But if you sat on it for months, either he, either you know, I'm gonna take the man at his word, but at the same time, I'm gonna add my little piece. He probably knew it won't all that, and it won't worth dropping either. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then, yeah. yeah, you know, and when it was right, the world, he was like, saw, the world saw that it was not, it wasn't all that. Yeah, you know. Um, and, and but but look, matter of fact, I mean, I didn't I didn't watch the interview, the Willie D interview, but all I the only clips I've seen from it is two clips. Is one cat talking about um, white people knowing why, why white people pay attention to black people. That was the one clip that I keep seeing circulate. And then the other clip is you you ask the worst questions. You ask the worst questions. That's the <laughs> clip I see the most is Cat saying, telling Willie D he asked the worst questions. So that's the most viral and clip from the whole did. thing. And he did. Now, with that being said, though, is was the interview, as somebody who did watch someone, was the interview that bad or was it just coming off the heels of what you had, it was that bad? It, without Shannon was, Sharp, Club Shay Shay okay. appearance, would it have still been a decent interview? It would have been an interview that would have been worth checking out. Just to, just to have an opportunity to hear in depth Cat Williams' experiences and the way he thinks and stuff like that. It, it, it's worth it in that aspect if there was ever no Club Shay Shay interview, right? If there was no Shannon Sharp interview, it was worth a listen to say, okay, let me hear what Cat has to say. Not in it for the Willie D questions or in it for the Willie D dynamic. That's not why you're going yeah. to the going to watch the interview. You're not going to watch how Willie D answers, a, asks the questions, or how Willie D um, poses certain um, scenarios for Cat to fall into. Mm-hmm. Definitely not it, you know. And he said, "I'm not a journalist, so I don't do this thing." This, but you, but you got a platform, and, and you interview people. Like, I, his his style of interviewing was trash. It was. Yeah. It was. Without okay. comparing it to anybody else, just if you just put them on an island and say this interview was the only interview that I've ever seen, you would even say, yes, um, you as an interviewer in this particular interview was, was lame. <clears throat> just the way he set the questions up, followed the questions up, it just, it didn't hit, didn't hit at all without comparing to anything else. But now you add that Shannon Sharp factor into it. Major, major egg. <laughs> okay. Okay. I mean, you know, it is what it is, man. So that's, that's the rough part about it, man. When you, when you, you're going to ride the wave, you're going to have to come with, you're going to have to deal with what comes with the territory because at the end of the day, if you have a lesser product or a lesser version while everybody's excited about it, it, it may behoove you and your brand <laughs> to hold on to it to avoid the hit you're going to take. So you got to yeah. weigh it out. Is the hit my brand could possibly take from the disappointment worth all the views I I'm going to get off this one video? You know what? Honestly, I think you got a point there because now after watching an interview, it's like how many people are going to take an interview with Willie D now? I think you tarnished uh-huh. for, for the click of, uh, for, for the sake of clicks and views. Yeah. You might've got a spike in the views for this one, but since you're not, that you got all that attention, how many of those people are going to come back to watch more Willie D interviews? Yeah, you're not going to you're not going to get people to follow up. You're not going to have follow up. You know, <laughs> or you might not get people that want to sit down and talk with you because I don't like the way you ask questions. No, I don't care to have have an interview with you. So yes, you got you got a spike in views, but you might have tarnished your um your your um your brand in a sense, possibly. Yeah, something to consider. So you, work, you know, um, which. Yeah. But you know, it, it, it'll 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 work out for Willie. However, it's supposed to work out. You know what I mean? He's been he's been at it for a while, and yeah. I don't think that uh, he does interviews. But I don't think that's his primary thing. I think Willie likes to talk social and and be his own mm-hmm. voice more so than uh, an interviewer. Yeah. You know, so 
It'd be all right. The people that come to Willie come for Willie. They don't come for his. I don't think they come to hear his interviews with other people all the time. You know, I don't think that's the primary thing. Like Shannon Sharp is more of an interview platform to me for Club Shay Shay, not mm-hmm. Nightcap and stuff like that. You know, his other brands, you come to hear him talk. But I think on Shay Shay, you kind of come to see oh, him interact yeah. with other people. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's just if he was trying to get into that space, he might have heard his case. To jump into that, yeah, space. yeah, yeah, yeah. Going into that space, he might have hurt himself, but you know. But all in all, I like Willie D. You know, I, I've, I've clicked on a few of his videos in the past just to hear what he had to say about certain things. So I applaud him for what he does. So it's no diss to Willie D. But the interview was well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, the OG didn't like it though. He ain't like he don't, he don't like people talking about his interview, man. He won't feel in that, man. So. You know. Hey, look, but if you're going to jump into a social space, if you're going to jump into a social space, you have to be willing to take the criticism. you got to be able to be willing to take critique, especially if you know, one, you clickbaited, two, the interview wasn't all that great. He should have been braced for the, for, for, for the, for the backlash. I, me, if I was in his shoes and I'm dropping that and I know it's just to get the views real quick, take a business opportunity, I'm taking a risk and I'm bracing for the backlash. Cause I already know. So, but you know the irony behind it is uh, Shannon Sharp had to deal with backlash also, which is the yeah. irony behind it all. Yeah, yeah. So that no matter which end of the spectrum you on, you dealing with backlash. Whether you on the end that everybody's praising, or whether you on the end everybody's insulting, like they both deal with backlash. How do you do? How do you do forty five to fifty million on a video, on on interview, and still got to deal with negative uh, critiques and then feel some kind of way about it. Because if I was Shannon Sharp, I wouldn't have said nothing. I wouldn't have responded to none of the critiques. Like, I'm sitting on 50, 50 million views. How about you? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, yeah. So, no criticism. Like, say what you want to say. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're going to have to respond, man. Yeah. What, what you but people there? didn't like the way he did the interview. Ain't that crazy? You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah, he, he should, he should I, I gave you obviously what's the most entertaining thing in in almost YouTube history because I think it's the it's second the highest rated interview of all time on YouTube. God, it's gotta be, gotta. Be. I think I think I heard that statistic. It's the second exactly. highest rated interview of all time on the history of YouTube since YouTube started. And you you have something to say about how I did the interview? I did it right. <laughs> but, Obviously, people watch? are entertained. Are you not entertained? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but like you said, he didn't have to even address that. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, yeah. I did me. You go do you. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't sit yeah. on the sideline and, and judge. You know what I'm saying? Go go do some work. Like, I saw Steven Jackson saying, I would have never let him talk about my people like that. It's like, yeah. Yeah, cool, yeah, yeah, Steven, yeah. but you you never get those results either. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, where's so your 50, where, where's your 50 million? But, but, based on the last episode, what yeah. about integrity, man? What about your integrity? Uh, Did you but, show your integrity? And you also oh, you gonna have an interview with somebody? And they gonna talk about me, your boy, for 20 plus yeah. years to get 50 million? Yeah. I'm gonna worry about that. You better say something. Yeah. You better stand yeah. up for me, man. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 but that's that's the fight that you got to choose. You know what I'm saying? So you can run your mouth about it, but that's your yeah. well, what, that's that your fight. This? Like you know what I'm saying? Like so, phone. don't don't complain about that. The fact that uh that he had you know how he did the interview, and you're not going and you I don't know, man. It's just but like where, where, so, where it gets. Where, go ahead, go ahead. Simple resolve for the Shannon Sharp thing. As simple as this. I don't know if he did it or if he didn't. But especially if you're my boy and I know you got an interview with such and such and they're going to say all this trash about me and you got an interview in the tuck. Interviews are already done. You rap. I let the man talk. That's my style of interviewing. I'm not going to interject. I'm going to just let the man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let whoever I, I, I'm interviewing just go. But I'm going to pick up the phone for those personal uh, relationships I have. Hey, Steve. Hey, said, Hey, whoever. Hey, I did this interview. It's going to come out. Cat Williams is saying these things. I don't feel this way. But I had to let him talk. It's my style of journalism or entertainment or interviewing. I wanted to let him talk so he can say what he had to say. I don't agree, but boom, this is what's going to be said. So you can brace for it. That's the only fix I say that that, that should have happened that's, on on Shannon Sharp's side. That's well, that's it. thorough what you're saying. But at the same time, Shannon let them cook when they was on the show and, and say whatever they yeah, needed yeah, to yeah, say. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's so it go both ways. They know, so, they, they know oh. their style of interviewing. They know what, yeah. they, what they expect. 
I let I let him cook. I let him cook. That's it. So hey, look, he, he cooked. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You were, part he of the ingredients. <laughs> you were one of the ingredients, and he he made one hell of a recipe. Too. He made a hell of a dish. He fed a lot of yeah. people off this one. So be prepared. Yeah. But but ultimately, right? That's the problem with a lot of these interviews, because when you get into being a journalist, it's a whole nother world. I I get that you want to respect your relationships and that does get into the whole world of integrity. But when you are a journalist, it's different because you can't be cutting your people off. As a journalist, I'm not there to listen to you talk. I'm there to listen to Cat Williams. And why would you cut him off when he's talking? That's not an interview. I don't want to hear what Shannon got to say right now. I'm here to hear what Cat got to say. Ask Cat some questions and let the man talk. I can't stand watching the interview with people being there just constantly cutting them off and not letting them talk. And then you never hear what the person, and I'm like, oh, I wanted to hear what the interviewer was going to say right there, but you cut them off. Like, Nori. It's like, hey. Nori. Strange hands. Nori. Nori's great at that. Like, you know, like, dang, Nori, he <laughs> almost and, said and, something. I wanted to hear it. And, and when Nori should have cut somebody off, he didn't. He was like, that's the that's the day you should have you should have interrupted when he did the Kanye joint. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's the, that's the day you want to be quiet and I interrupt? Okay. <laughs> but let me ask you this. Exactly. You, brought up, you brought up a point that um that like brought some uh, thought to my head, right? So Charles Barkley and MJ, right? We know they were best friends at one point. Yeah. But um Barkley, like, yo, I had, I'm doing my job. I'm not speaking to you as an individual or speaking about you as an individual, as a man, as a friend, as a father, yeah. as a whatever. I'm talking about your your acumen as a GM. Yeah. You're not that great. And I said what I had to say, and I'm, I'm standing on it. I'm not going to apologize for it, but it ruined their relationship. And I think they haven't talked in, what, 10 years? Something like something yeah. crazy like that? Something like that. Off of Charles yeah. Barkley sticking to his guns and saying, hey, look, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my job as an analyst and I'm analyzing the sports world and you in the sports world, your position right now as a GM, you're not performing and I, and, and I have some critique about it. And this is the reason why I feel the way I feel. And after that, it's, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Lost his friendship with MJ. It's crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you know, in, in, in circumstances like that, because that's not a situation where somebody interviewing and you the journalist asking the question and then having to sit back and listen to their response you know what i'm saying as as the person doing an interview it's not your place to tell them stop talking because you're talking about my friend it's your place to let them talk and then like you say warn your friend but with chuck and mike it's a different dynamic because chuck is an analyst and like he said he's analyzing him in the context of sports and not as an individual person so it's all work related you know what i mean but i would think me personally, that Chuck wouldn't say anything about Mike that Mike doesn't know Chuck already feels. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So if, yeah. if y'all homies like that enough, I would have thought that at some point on the golf course, you'd have, made, you'd have cracked some jokes with him to let him know, hey, man, you suck as a, as a GM. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I, I, I had a hard time seeing that Mike had never heard Chuck felt that way. You know what I mean? Like, if, sure. if Mike's first time hearing it was on TV, that's kind of weird to me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so even then, I know Chuck's personality is what it is and it's very uh, right in your face and rambunctious, but I think maybe Chuck could have softballed his answer a little bit with his homie. You know what I mean? Like, he could have, yeah. Yeah. It, Cause like, I'm putting the responsibility on the individual making the comment. It's on Cat that Cat said that. It ain't on Shannon. To, to stop Shannon, to stop what Cat got to say. That's a grown man running his mouth. Your platform or not, you know what I mean? Cat yeah. is held responsible for those remarks. Charles Barkley is responsible for those remarks. So I think Mike is a little sensitive, and I think Charles probably should have softballed it a little bit if he had never said that to Mike before. But yeah. I, I have a hard yeah, time hard, believing that he didn't believe, say yeah. it. Because they from yeah. that cloth where you, you, you play hard with your homies, you know what I'm saying? Like, they from that era, so. Yeah, I, I know Chuck done like, told him he's doing a bad job at some point. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> not if you ain't said it in private. Don't say it public. That's 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 my thing. You know what I'm saying? If you yeah. ain't said it in private, and, 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 don't say like it. you said, he, if, if if that was the first time hearing it, yeah, I can understand why I might have rubbed Mike the wrong way, but have a hard time believing that. All right, man. So, um, how you feeling about your cigar to this point, man? Uh, so far, so good. You know what I'm saying? It's a solid stick so far. Uh, I've been picking up on, like I say, it was, it was like a little bit of a. Uh, 
a fruitiness there to the stick, uh, a little bit of uh, mm -hmm. uh, some coffee notes that I picked up on a little bit, and some yeah. subtle spice in the mix. But that's that's kind of the note so far. And that's rocky. And so my spice, yeah. it knocked out pretty quick, faster than what I expect a rocky um, spice to to do. So I don't know if I if I like that on rocky or not. I, it's a nice <laughs> touch, but yeah. it's like. When you when you smoke a rock, you expect to see the the, the spice to last a little bit long longer. Um, but it's it's it's, it's dialed back. It's got nice and smooth. This is a smooth ride, Rocky. This is a smooth ride. Um, I don't know if the cedar helped heighten the cedar, but I'm getting a lot of cedar notes, a lot of cocoa, um, and just some good earthiness right now. It's really really a smooth touch, a smooth ride to this point. So shout out to this uh, limited age rare. Um, I'm saying right now, I can see why it's a top 10. I can say that at this point. I can see why it's a top 10. Okay. That's the answer I wanted there right there. I can yeah. see why. I can see why. Hey, so um, moving on to some more everything else. So this kind of ties back to one of our, um, actually our very first episode, episode one. We um, You posed a question. I had no idea this question was going to be thrown at me. It was uh, a nice question, though. We, we, we both love music. We both do music, make music, and are producers of, of, of sorts, artists of sorts. And music holds a really high place in, 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 in our lives, right? So you posed a question about top, what was it, top five music producers? And we uh, to, Mount Rushmore uh, of, of Mount Rush music Mount producers. Rushmore, that's, that's what it was. There we go. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it was a really good question. But now as it's, it's um time has passed, right? And to revisit a Mount Rushmore of music producers. And if I had to have a cutoff year, say twenty fifteen, give or take a year or two. Mm -hmm. And we started to say, okay, who is the next wave of producers who will be on a new Mount Rushmore of producers? I would be hard pressed to say that we won't have a Mount Rushmore of music producers. As it as it stands right now, is if, if things go in the way that it's going, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm so far out of the realm of hip hop or popular hip hop, um, like 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 we were in our heyday, right? Yeah. To know who are the who's who are producers, right? So we know we got mega producers like um Timbaland, Jay Z, no, not not Jay Z, J D. Um, <clears throat> you know, we got, um, who's still out there? Pharrell and them are still out there. They still getting it in. And I feel yeah. like we are still living off of the mega producers of old. We, we, we know the names of Just Blaze. We know the names of Swiss Beats. We know, we know these guys. You know, we, 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 we got, um, Metro. We got a few, uh, tags that might pop up every now and then. Producer tags. Yeah. But it's hard for me to say that any of those guys who have producer tags right now that you're hearing, and where we're going, do we have an era of the mega producer? Is, is it gone now completely? I don't think we have a name like a Timbaland. We don't have a name like the Neptunes. We don't have a name like Swiss Beats. <laughs> we don't have a name like, you know, Teddy Riley. Yeah. I don't, I don't necessarily see it as it stands right now. In 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 the in the in the um genre of hip hop. I'm not talking about R and B. Or whatever these subgenres are that I fall into weird areas, but hip hop as yeah. it is, I, I'm not seeing the Large Professor, the Ninth Wonder, even um, Pete Rock. You know these guys. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think you're right. It's possible. I think you're right. I think um, there are names that exist. You know, and, I, and I'm having a hard time calling them right off the top of my head at this moment. But there's some of the younger yeah. guys that, that have names out there. They're names. But the mega producer, nah, man, that's that's done, man. I think it's done. Yeah. I mean, like you, you mentioned Metro Boomin, and he he's probably like one of the last little eras where they was like, like that, you know what I'm saying? Like this, that yeah. could be considered one of the mega producers. Um, 
I mean, you got you got Hitmaker, you got um yeah, yeah, yeah. Hitmaker, Hitmaker doing his thing, but like Hitmaker, like Hitmaker's at our age, you know what I'm saying? Like Hitmaker's right. like forty now, you're like right. so you're right. he don't really you're count. Right. So matter of so, fact, um, yeah, does, does Hitboy even count? Yeah, Hit Boy, you Hit know? Boy. I, I don't know Hit Boy's age, but Hit Boy strike me as a little older. <laughs> like I, yeah. Hit Boy got hot in like the tens, the tens area. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like so he, he, got, would, he would be past that wave because I'm, I'm talking twenty. He's past that wave. It would take a year or two. Yeah, he got hot with uh, the Kanye and Jay-Z album, d- d- you know, uh, mm-hmm. in Paris. The ends in Paris. I think yeah, that yeah, might have yeah, been, yeah. been the record that really blew him up. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that's, I go back, bro. Like, Hit Boy don't count. Like, I, we talking about somebody from, like, right, from, like, like you said, from 20, maybe 16 forward that that popped. I don't know, man. Um, yeah. Cause it, it falls into the mega like, category. When you, you, matter of fact, yeah. A great producer, good producer, or a solid or talented producer doesn't necessarily put them in that class of mega producer. Because to me, yeah. when, I, when I say mega producer, it's oh, such and such produced that. I gotta go. Li- you 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 beat feet to go listen to it. You know what I'm saying? You 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 do whatever you gotta do to find out. Yo, this is this is this is. Oh, he got he got he got he got Kanye producing the album. Oh, he got oh this, yeah. this he, he you know and when the producers. <laughs> all up in the video, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? Back in back in that day, when 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 Timberland did a joint, he was in the video with with the with the artist. He might have his little speaking part, and he's putting his little sprinkle on it, making it hot. Yeah, well, where's yeah, the, the producer that's making the joint hot? The mega producer is when you say, "I got so and so that did this record." You know what I mean? Like the the mega yeah. producer is that the mega producer is the one that you go and get to do a whole project with. You know, the yeah. mega producer is the one that crosses over out of hip hop and does some joints with some artists you don't expect. And then you'd be like, well, he did that, too. Like, you know, like, so I think that's done. Like I say, Metro might be the last little young dude that that, that kind of showed a little bit of range. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, of working got, with all the big names that kind of got that cachet. But even then, maybe just slightly under the 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 value that them guys got back in the day just because the producer meant yeah. so much back in the day I don't yeah, think it's at his fault but it's just the era that he came up in, the era that he's in. yeah yeah I mean um, I, I kind of miss that like and, I, I, and Metro's point, not that new either though we keep saying Metro not, Metro's oh, been Metro, around for yeah. about twelve years himself though like so he kind of fall in the right. last category because yeah. I, I want to say I heard Metro coming around like around 2012, 2015. Yeah, yeah. he go back around 12-ish. Like, but so only, only out, why I would throw Metro went to it because he wasn't a huge name in 2012 or whatever. He was, you know, he was creeping in. He was creeping in. Yeah, he was with 808 Mafia really and all them was, guys. Yeah, they were always like Lex Luger. They was all yeah. kind of in that little range together. Yeah. But it's like, I, I kind of miss that era. And I didn't think that I would. You know, but it's kind of something I'm fond of being being somebody who who produces music too. It's like, man, at some point, at one point, having a producer was more major than having an artist. <laughs> it could be a, whatever artist it was, but if it was produced by this this person, that's all you needed. I just yeah. need to get a mega a, producer would break an artist. Yeah, break an artist like that. If you wanted to break your new artist, you go get a record from. The Neptunes, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Go get a tempo record and break them. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that was the so thing. Like, Squeeze was breaking thing. everybody. I want to know who are the go-to producers, young producers, because it still feels like it's the it's the same name still. Is if you want to break an artist, go get a Neptunes beat. Still, it's crazy. It's 25 plus years past the Neptunes uh, break into the industry. You know that you still go to Pharrell and Chad and them to to break a record, or you still go to Timbo to break a record. Or you still go to whoever? Like, who are you going to? Who who's breaking records outside of? Any- oh, I feel man, like the artists that, are that, carrying I, the producers more so now. I mean, it's 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 a uh, email me a beat or I find a beat somewhere, and that's how we're curating projects now. No, it's it's that it's that what you said. You know what I'm saying? It's it's that. But at the same mm-hmm. time. And I wish I wish I'd have been a little more prepared for this conversation to name some of these guys by name. There are guys that that exist. Um, dang, they 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 all slip in my mind. I, I know there's an ATL J. The he's a guy. that's out if there. Your mind, um, if, if they're slipping your mind, they might be good producers and they might be making good songs. But the key the key term, and you brought this back to me, 
was mega producer. Mega yeah. producer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, producer. Well, hot there's a lot of hot producers. Hot You're right. Producers. You're right. There's a lot of hot producers that, that are doing you, hot things. Had, They're working with a lot of people, but they're not mega yet. You had the heat makers. You knew that was a heat maker. We had track master. You know that was a track master's joint. Yeah. So now I'm going back to 2000s again. <laughs> That's all the names I got in my back pocket. Is producers you go to from that that era, and you know that's a track master's beat. You know that's that's that that a hey, yeah hit makers made that joint. Or oh, that's just yeah. Or that's Jay. Do it. We know this is Justice League. Yeah. Okay. What about Weezy out of there? You know him, don't you? I know you heard that. They say that on all the little beats and stuff. I know the tag. I know the tag. You know the tag. So here's the thing. Okay. So here's the here's the thing. All right. So we got. Let's call it this. We got tag producers. Yeah. We got tag, tag producers. producers. You know what? You know what, what? What I think happened, though? I think when uh, when the price tags on the producers dropped, the, the need to brag about your producer <laughs> dropped also. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Maybe so. Because like, look, check it out. I see a clip. Where uh, Timberland was talking to, he was doing an interview with some producers. He was like, man, y'all killed the uh, production game. I used to get 500000 a track. Y'all killed that. He was like, so, you know, I, y'all ain't, he was like, nah, it's not, um, it's not as lucrative. You know, the game ain't as good for producers yeah. as it used to be. But, you know, he was like, so now, it's a lot so more opportunity it for everybody. It's about how many tags can you get on a, on, on, on a record now? Not about how big of a record you can make. That's what made the mega producer. Mega producer is thinking how big this record can be. The tag producer is now how many tags can I get put out there? How many tags can I put on record? That's it. Yeah. You know, which 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 kills me because what I liked about our producers back from my day is you get a sense of the that um that producer's personality in the record. You know? or who's ever creating the atmosphere or the vibe for the song, you're kind of getting that personality drug into it. You don't get that with the tag. And that was fun. Yeah. You know, that was that was pretty dope when you knew that, that that producer produced that record and they might be all up in the video, <laughs> but, you get, but yeah. you're getting that personality with the record. And it it, 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 yeah. it became great for the producer. Now it was a point to where it was a little it was a little weird where the producers came became bigger than the artists. So now the artists is kind of take a little bit of power back from the producer, which is fine, which is fine. But now we got to find that balance. We got to fine tune it. We got to find that balance of <laughs> giving more back to the producer, letting the producer still have their their oomph in the record. In order to do that, though, they got to produce the record. They gotta That's the, the problem. We're talking about a lot of beat makers now. That's the problem. It's a lot of beat makers who make beats, email them, or post them on a website, and you buy it from them. It's, okay. it's no producing. You know what I'm saying? So you, you don't get, you're not going to get all the love because you ain't do nothing but send me a beat. I did everything else. My engineer, <laughs> I freestyled and my engineer did the whole job. Like, so I, say, I don't need you as producer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, matter of fact let's, I think the engineers need to be bigger than the producers and the artists now. The engineer, Today, yes. matter of fact, so we the went to the start. where it was, it was, it was the producer, it was the Barry Gordy, it was the Quincy Jones, it was the, yeah. you know what I'm saying? John Doe. <laughs> you know, really making a record. Right. And it became the artist. Now it's the, it's the engineers that's making these artists sound good. It's the engineers yeah. that's making the producers sound good. Yeah. Yeah. All of that. All of that. That's where we at now. The engineer go in there. You freestyle for about three, four minutes to the beat run out. And then you say, hey, engineer, I'm about to go smoke some weed. Make me a hot <laughs> song. And then you come back and the engineer done auto-tuned your, your out-of-tune right. notes up and made you sound it's, like you said something. It's the song that just Loop did. one part and made a chorus out of it. Yeah, yeah, you I come did. back. I did. I, man, I, I, was, I was hot, man. I killed that freestyle. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> I looped up the best part, made it into the hook. And then, you know, I cleaned the rest yeah, of that vocal you up, brought it, You brought it to my attention about stems, right? I didn't care about stems. Like, I, you just make your sounds, you put it together, create your record. But now, yeah. when a producer produces a record or makes the beat, you got to send the stems 
So the engineer can go and change what the producer did. So a lot of times yeah. the producer might hear that record back and be like, I produced that? Yeah. I made that beat? Because <laughs> yeah. that beat don't sound like what I said. Because <laughs> you took the stems and I added a little bit of trinkle on this sound and made this sound sound more in key on this and because I got those yeah. stems. So now, for those people who don't know what stems are, they're the individual tracks to every sound that's in a, in, 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 in a, in a beat. And these engineers are going in and, they, and they're making magic with those stems. Mm-hmm. So the show is really on the engineer now. Yeah, they're reproducing the whole record to actually make it into a full actual song. So, so, so who's the real producer yeah. then? The, the engineer. They need to start giving these engineers production credits, man. Straight up, straight up and down, man. If you go in there and you freestyle over, over a, a two-track, then get an engineer credit. You know what I'm saying? As soon as you order the stems and send it to the engineer and make him fix it up, hey, man, get him his production credit. <laughs> and 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 the producers need to learn to produce if you're not actually doing that, man. Find your artist and, and actually know how to make a song, man. Like, that was one yeah. of the... I started producing immediately once I started making beats. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was it, it went hand in hand. Giving advice yeah. to the rappers you're working with, telling them what... what because it's got to be a, a a creative process between two people. It just can't be one person. And that's why I think a lot of the music has um, become watered down. Because people go in yeah. and do it by themselves and they never get no other feedback on the record. You know what I mean? Like to find out if I'm going in the right direction and not, they're not collaborating. There's no collaboration to it. Music has always been a collaboration. Like forever. Even, even, you go even, you go to Beethoven even. and it's stuff written on a piece of paper, but when somebody gets it, they they put their touch on whatever notes was written down. You know what I'm saying? You, like, got, you, got, you got that conductor conducting it and making sure that this piece comes in just right and that part hits right here and this part comes right there. And I learned this process from jazz, being a big jazz head and mm-hmm. looking at, you know, saying old Miles Davis, uh Miles Davis records and seeing all the pieces that came together to to make this record what it was, whether it was John Coltrane being put on this and then Bill Evans playing the keys on this and then Miles Davis writing the whole thing, putting it together and having this this, this drummer over here, bass player or whatever, and then pull, pulling it all together to create this sound, this beautiful sound that we love called music. And it's yeah. gotten a lot, it's gotten, we're far, so far from it, so far removed far from, from it. it. Yeah. So to answer the question, the mega producer era is dead. Maybe one day it'll be back, but it's gone for now. Let's review these sticks, though, man. Yeah. All right, man. So let's get to the final review. We doing Rocky. I'll kick it off first. We got Rocky. Rocky, Rocky, you on the stage. So you want me to go first? I'll kick it off. I'll kick it off. No, no, no. You can say we go. You go first? I'm going to kick it off. Yeah, I'll kick it off. So this week, I smoked the Rocky Patel, the Dark Star by Rocky Patel. Um, this particular cigar, it started off giving me some fruity notes. I would say fruity notes is pretty much what I picked up on. Um, kind of dry stick, not, no oiliness to it. I do always like that. So it lacked that. So I kind of wish I had that element to it. It, uh, I picked up on, I would say some earthy notes, some coffee notes. This stick had some consistent spice throughout it, but not uh, anything over the top, you know, nice and smooth. Um, it did have, uh, a little bit of some cedar notes that I picked up on within this stick also. And I would say probably some dark chocolate notes. Um, those are the tasting notes that I picked up on. I would say the stick overall had a good draw. It had good construction to it. So I give credit for that. Um, I would say this stick on a scale from one to five, I'm going to rate this stick a three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah. Three and a half. Final answer. Final <laughs> answer. Three and a half. Okay. 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 And that's that's going off our new rating scheme. We're being tough on these sticks, y'all. We're being tough on these sticks. So three point five is still good though. Still three point five is still good. But um I was hoping for a little bit more out of that dark star. That dark star looked like a beautiful stick. I was look I was look, I was hoping it would hit the four. But it's here beautiful. We are. All right, so this limited age rare, which is 2023's top 10. I can't remember where it fell in the top 10. But I think it was like um, one of the top, I think it was like maybe four or something like that. That's why, that's why I think. Um, but to get into the stick from my vantage point, from my palate, I would say that this stick came off really, really nice. Spice hit me in the very beginning. 
um, with a little onion tone of some uh, some cocoa. The spice dialed back. Cocoa kind of kicked in a little bit more. Some espresso came out um, to this point where looking look at that look at that ash too. Um, and I didn't drop it this time. <laughs> um, so some espresso came in, and it really kind of just evened out a little. Actually, it didn't it didn't even out. It, it it just calmed down to a nice little smooth ride. Very very smooth ride. Got a little bit of uh, some 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 fruit, like a dark fruit in there too. Um, kind of reminded me a little bit of of a, of, a, of a fig too, but a good espresso, earth, and cedar that kind of all kind of blended in together. As soon as I hit that 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 second third, got to that second third. But overall, I would say that aroma is nice. The ride is smooth, and this is one of those cigars that you can pull out and you can relax to. It's just it's, it's it's a good good vibe stick, and that's not how I describe a lot of Rocky Patel. So this is very unique from my point when it comes to Rocky, a good vibe stick with a lot of good um, twists and turns, a lot of good notes that kind of kick at you, and they're very noticeable, but they vibe well. The vibe between all the flavors are are are, are, are blended very well. Um, to give it a final rating out of four, I'm mean, out of out of five. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to have to give this stick, and I gave it away already, a solid 4.0. A solid 4.0. Right there, right at, right at a four. Could it give me more? When I get down, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting the, the rating to actually to, 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 to get better. I'm expecting these flavors to intensify, intensify. But at this point, right now where we are, nice 4.0. Good stick. Good vibe stick. I like it. <laughs> That's what it is, man. All right. That's the end of a Rocky Patel episode here. Episode 78. We appreciate y'all for tuning in to this week's episode of the Cigars and Everything Else podcast. Please keep your sticks up, huh? Holla at y'all. We out. Yeah.